I love London and I feel so lucky to live here. There's always so much to see and do and it's also full of some of the country's best art, food, drink and history. It's a giant sprawling city, but honestly it's best thought of as a collection of small villages, each with their own flavour and charm. One of those villages is Greenwich in the city's southeast and it's most famous for its naval history. And that's where I start my day at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich Park. Welcome to the observatory. Thank you so much. From up here we can really see why the observatory was established at Greenwich. We're up on a hill so we've got great views of the horizon to see the stars as they rise and set and also you've got the river which is convenient both for the astronomers for getting into town but also in later centuries would be good for seeing the time ball signal so they could set their timekeepers before going out to sea. So this is the historic prime meridian, zero degrees longitude, so you can effectively stand with one foot in the eastern hemisphere and one in the western hemisphere. On display inside the observatory, you'll also find the intricately crafted historic timepieces that have allowed sailors to determine their longitude at sea. Greenwich is also home to the Cutty Sark, it's a traditional tea clipper famed for being one of the fastest of its day. However, I'm going to continue my day by taking a slightly more modern vessel. An Uber boat by Thames Clippers is one of the fastest ways to zip around the city. From Greenwich, it's just 25 minutes to London Bridge Pier, and honestly, it's a far more civilised way to travel in this most frantic of cities. After all that, I need a coffee, and for that, I go to Borough Market. Borough Market is one of the oldest food markets in London. It dates back to the 12th century. Um, can I please have a cappuccino? Do you take any chocolate powder on top? I would love some chocolate. So we are a social enterprise helping people who have experienced homelessness or are currently experiencing homelessness get training to become baristas. We've got a training scheme where they'll come with us, they learn the basics, then they'll stay with us for two or three months as they get experience in different sites and then when they finish we do our best to support them with housing and further employment opportunities, training and just to give them a chance. No worries. It's a good cup of coffee. It is, it is. Life changing. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Have a nice day. Borough Market has everything from street food stalls to ordinary groceries. But be warned, don't come here hungry. I'm trying to resist as my next stop is Seabird. It's a rooftop seafood restaurant above the Hoxton Hotel in Southwark, and the views are as amazing as the dishes. Here, a leisurely lunch involved platters of the finest tuna ceviche, lobster rolls and some interesting prawn croquettes. In need of a stroll after lunch, I head over to Hyde Park, the biggest park in central London. It's home to the world-famous Serpentine Gallery, as well as a memorial to Diana. But it's also a great outdoor space too. I even give rowing across the Serpentine Lake a go. You're very kind. Thank you. Yeah, me and my muscles. After all that effort, I need a cocktail, and thankfully there are plenty of places in London to find those. My last stop is The Nest on the top floor of the Treehouse Hotel right by Oxford Circus, and it's the place to pair your cocktail with fantastic views. Bartender Laszlo recommended a couple of cocktails to get me started. The Botanica Sour is based on gin. Yep. Some sweet, which is going to be the elderflower cordial. You can order a glass. A beautiful viola flower in the top. It is your botanical Thank you sir. So much. Please enjoy. All right, cheers. Cheers. London doesn't have many rooftop bars, so this one feels particularly special. And even on a trademark grey day, it's a great place to toast the end of a perfect day in London. <laughs> 